All right, howdy. Well, another night down, and look at that, ends out. I uh, didn't really take any videos during, kind of just went by so quick. In all honesty, it really wasn't that bad. Uh, follow the step-by-step -step directions on all this one tech, and you basically got it. Um, the six bolts underneath there, the only thing that was janky, the six bolts that hold the K member onto the body, they, you need to be able to support the engine somehow, or else so you start taking those bolts out and the engine falls down on the K member. And yeah, I was pretty close to having a hand crushed. Um, luckily my DeWalt Impact took the brunt of it, but I had a dolly underneath the K member which I'm rolling it around on, just helps kind of support some of the weight of the engine there. There's a little dolly, just a $10 one for Harbor Freight, down there. And uh, I had the body halfway supported by the cherry picker, just so that way if something happened, the body wouldn't come down on me while I was underneath there, because there's no you know, jack stands. I had the wheels on the ground. And then I started taking the bolts out, and one side just kind of took the third bolt off of one side and blop, came right down. So what I found was put a jack underneath the lower control arm down here and put some weight. So I just put a jack underneath this lower control arm, put some weight on here, and that held the K-member. You got a bolt there, a bolt there, and you got one back here. So taking those three out, like I said, just put some weight on that lower control arm. And then you can take all three of them out and take your jack out. Granted, you got a low profile uh, Napa jack and it probably, if you got anything that isn't low profile, well, you know the issues of working on a car like Camaro's. But um, it's out. Cherry picker worked great, man. Just jacked it up and was able to roll it right out, which is awesome. So, well, that apparently probably probably was the easy part of this process, <laughs> in all honesty. Um, next up, I gotta get the rear end out. Put this whole thing up in jack stands, take the rear end out of this silver car here so I can get to the gas tank. I essentially, I guess my plan is I'm gonna strip this car bare um, and then start working on the green one. The green one here, I guess, start with taking the rear end out. Well, in all honesty, I guess I'm going to take the engine out. I'm going to strip both these bare. I'm going to take the engine out, and then I'll take the rear end out, because I need that rear end to pivot when I take the engine out. So I'm going to take the engine out, take the rear end out, take the gas tank out, so that way I can swap gas tanks over, swap fuel lines over. And then I can put the rear end back in. And then I can start working either... I'm probably going to work on the interior, because... I would like to have everything all set so we can just drop the LS1 in, bolt her up, connect everything, and go. That would be my preferred way to go here rather than drop the LS1 in and then have to deal with interior wiring and interior stuff. I'll see if a few buddies will come by when I drop the LS1 in for the first time and see if we can fire it up and make some noise. Taking the LS1 out, I did snap some uh, manifold bolts coming off the white pipe. Um, studs there, so hey, why not just do a long tubes? But during all of that, I also have to uh, do the input uh, shaft and mid plate for the uh, T56. And I don't know, I guess I haven't really covered that and I feel like it's gonna be quite the process. There's some shimming that needs to be done on the input uh, shaft, which hmm, I haven't really looked into, and it's one of those things, you know, start working on it, see what happens. All right, catch you in the next one.